Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is our next installment of the Hathor material, which is the book that was written by Tom Kenyon. Uh, we are almost at the end of this book. Today is also the very last day of our 60-day shadow work challenge. Good job, you guys. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Winners will be selected soon for all the prizes. And, and yeah, we'll be doing some upcoming episodes with some of our participants, all that kind of stuff. I do have the next challenge in the works right now. We're going to give it about a month or so to let everything integrate into your system. And then we're going to do what we call a 10-day intensive shadow work challenge. But I will give more details about that the closer we get to doing that 10-day intensive. Again, as I've said, as Emmy has also said, we want to very much make sure that you give yourself time to integrate everything you've worked through over these last 60 days. That does not mean you stop exercising. That does not mean you stop journaling. It just means you pull back the intensity a little bit, not with the exercise, not with you know the meditation, but just with the subject matter at hand, maybe just journal stuff about your day now, not looking deeply at your traumas for a little bit, just to kind of let things unravel. But keep up the good work, keep up the exercise, keep up the meditation, keep up the cold showers, keep up the Epsom salt hot baths at night oil bathing everything keep it up you are a rock star and now that you've done this for 60 days you have some autonomy you know more about yourself and so you can make better decisions when it comes to your own path and your own journey all right now let's get back into the addendum of the hathor material today we are starting with heal healers and healing last week we spoke a lot about sound healing and sound vibration very interesting and this week we're going to jump off with healers and healing healers need to be aware that there is a danger when working with other people's energy an improperly purified teacher who works with someone who is ill may actually feel depleted after working with such a person and or he or she may later have a healing crisis to face. Absolutely. As a Ashtanga teacher, that's something that's important for me to do as well. Um, I know many Ashtanga teachers who have their own little rituals to try to seal off their energy. So when they put their hands on their students to help them, they're not picking up empathically picking up the energy from the student that their work remains their work this is also why for most yoga teachers in, in traditional yoga i don't know about the contemporary yoga but in traditional yoga we are taught to take care of our practice before we teach our students so that we can balance ourselves and ground ourselves before being a vessel or a tool to the people that we're trying to help support through their own practice so it's super important to have that spiritual hygiene absolutely a healer may discover to his or her dismay that after he or she has brought through healing energies for another person the healer's own call may be depleted although he or she may not feel the results immediately the reason for this disparity has to do with the healer's own level of awareness and the source of energy that he or she is using to heal Interesting, we've been speaking a lot about organic portals, and we've said over and over and over again that your job is not to fix anybody. If somebody is draining your energy, you your job is to put up a boundary. We have been taught by the controllers in our churches, in our schools, that to be a good person, you need to be self-sacrificing. But according to all the spiritual material, to be self-sacrificing is to be of the darkness, is satanic. And so, yes, you have to be very, very aware of your own energy. I say this all the time. It's a very famous quote. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Your job as a healer is simply just to lead that horse to water. Whether that horse drinks or not is up to the horse. If you're a Reiki practitioner, the Reiki is not even going to work on the subject unless the subject is open to the healing. If you're a yoga teacher, the same thing. The yoga teacher cannot do the work for the student. All the yoga teacher can do is provide the template of the work. You cannot save anybody, right? If there is a relationship that you have in your life that is toxic and you think for some reason you can save that person or change that person, you are sorely mistaken. The only person 
that that is affecting is you it's draining it's an energy vampire it's draining you of your call of your life force and your responsibility on the path of the light of the good is to preserve that it's like in an airplane when the oxygen mass drops they tell you to put it on yourself first before you put it on somebody else when a person is in need of energy there is a level of self not necessarily conscious that pulls energy from whomever and whatever is available if you are a healer and you are with someone who is in need of a type of energy that you have he or she will pull it from you either consciously or unconsciously again that goes back to a lot of the organic portal discussions that we have where they literally so organic portals if you missed those discussions i will put them down in the description box below but organic portals don't have their upper four chakras it stops at manipura and so they have to mimic you in order to feel an emotional center and in mimicking you they pull they have to pull on your energy all right so that's called an energy vampire be aware of this be very very aware of this we are speaking about the vital energy the prana which is held by your ka the spiritual twin of your physical body when energy fields are interconnected there are strands sent from the person who needs energy to the one who has energy the needy one pulls energy like water from a well and this is usually an unconscious act because it occurs at another level of the self indeed this is the true symbolic meaning of the word vampire all right there we go i just said that before reading it you can be vampired of your energy and we're not talking about sucking someone's blood although those vampires exist too we're talking about pulling someone's vital energy from his or her ka that's so important please i think it's i'm getting kind of chill bumps that the organic portal information came up as we're getting to this information so you're hearing this from multiple multiple sources again i'm going to repeat martyrdom is not good martyrdom is an act of selfishness it's an act of satanic abuse protect yourself you if you are not energetically prepared and don't understand the phenomenon you can be with someone who is physically and or emotionally depleted or psychologically disturbed and after you leave him or her you will feel depleted yourself we've all been there ding 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 knowledge is power and knowledge protects now you know this is one reason why some nurses, doctors, and other healthcare givers often feel drained, and yoga teachers and Reiki healers. They are frequently surrounded by the sick who drain their ka for healing emergency. Transfusions of energy, not just blood, are possible. The controllers know this. The bad guys all know this. So this is the first level of understanding regarding your energy. It is a vitality that can be pulled or drained by another person. And that is ultimately what they're trying to do, right? That is ultimately what they want. They want your soul. They want your energetic energy. And I, studying the organic portal phenomenon, I had a remembrance of something that happened when I was a high schooler, uh, when I was in youth group, when I was a teenager. And they had this big like program at our church and it was the i am third program and so we all got these posters we got these t-shirts that said i am third and it had this like these numbers one two three god first other second you third that is the most satanic poster and teachings you can teach a child but we know that the churches are owned by the cabal. We know that the, ch the Christian churches are actually satanic like that. We know that, right? They're 501c3s. They're controlled by the Satanist. I mean, follow the money. Look, If you look at the seminary schools, follow the money. Who funds the seminary schools? The same people who fund the media. It's the same people. Okay, so from a very young age, they have tried to warp and twist what empathy actually is because remember the darkness can't create anything it can only steal and invert so they took this idea of empathy of having compassion for another person having love for another person and they twisted it to make you self-sacrifice for another person giving up your energy your time your life 
for another person. That is a negative polarity. So that is going to be a very hard deprogramming for a lot of people to work through. I know a lot of people had mentioned that. So basically, if that's something you struggle with, like not giving of yourself too much, then what you struggle with are boundaries. And so what you need to learn now is how to put up healthy boundaries. And people in your life who are healthy minded will respect those boundaries. All right. If you are not aware of your call and how life force energy is being extracted from you, then you may suddenly feel as if the plug has been pulled and there is no energy left in the body. If this occurs, you must go off and replenish it. I also have this phenomenon happen to me when I'm in a location and on the earth that is very demonic. So if I'm in a, in a location like a town where there's a lot of really dark energy, I get drained. I get drained like that big time in Rome, Georgia. I, I have a really hard time being in Rome, Georgia, because I get so drained that I can hardly keep my eyes open because it is very much, in my opinion, from what I understand, allegedly, I have to say, full of satanic people. In fact, I know for a fact there are more satanic. That's a cluster of satanic activity. I know that because I've researched it. There's a cluster of controller activity is a very wealthy town um there's also when i was in putnam connecticut same thing i had a really hard time keeping my uh myself balanced in putnam connecticut so there's certain places on the earth that are going to do that as well where there's a lot of um congested maybe uh demonic activity happening doesn't mean those places can't be purified. Absolutely, they can, because again, the darkness cannot create, only the light can. And so over time, we can go through and purify and cleanse the nature. But at this point, because there is so much satanic activity going on, for me, it's best just to, to avoid those areas at this time in the timeline. All right. Returning to the topic of healers. Energy depletion can also occur due to subtle emotional flows within a person's emotional body. These emotional flows are affected by the healer's thoughts and feelings about the person being healed. These emotional flows can also be the result of the healer's agenda. For example, when a healer is trying to force a healing through his or her own will. You can't force anybody. And I, I feel that way. Like if I have a student that I really don't like, I tend to want to persuade that student to go to another teacher because it's not fair. And that's why uh, like in India, if I'm in India, say like you go to India with your husband or your wife and you're both authorized teachers. If you're in the shala with Sharat and you're assisting, you are not allowed to be anywhere near your spouse. You can't adjust them. You can't teach them. You're really not supposed to be teaching friends either. There has to be a boundary there because of the emotional and energetic investment you have with your lover or your child or your parent or your friends. It's not healthy to then be their teacher and their healer. You need to probably it's like it's like in the medical world like i know with my family all being doctors i know that no family member of mine who's a doctor can do a surgery on me or can treat me in a clinic there's an ethical uh a moral and ethical dilemma there they don't like for you to treat your family members you have to refer your family members to another doctor all right, and that makes sense, right? We, we need, so if you have a, someone come to you and you can keep that boundary of just knowing what their issue is and not being invested in them as a person, you yourself are a better conduit for healing because there is no emotional investment. That's why with therapists, that's why therapy, when you go to your therapist, you need to go to someone who doesn't know you outside of the therapy room because they can be objective and they can really, really do what's right for you without me being emotionally invested in you. I hope that makes sense. If you are sending energy from yourself and draining your own vitality, then you are in trouble because you personally have only a limited amount of energy that is available to you until you replenish it. If you are clear that you are a channel for healing and not the source of it, then that healing energy simply flows through you and not from you. So this is big in the Reiki world, right? My friend Emmy, who's a Reiki healer, Reiki comes through her. It's not of her. Does that make sense? You're channeling through you, not of you. 
if it flows through you without the blockages of limited motives, this purity will reduce much of the fatigue and exhaustion that some healers are experiencing. Another issue is being clear about your own call and your own life force so that you can sense when your energy is being drawn from you. Unfortunately, most humans are not aware when their energy is being vampired or pulled from them until after the fact, until they are exhausted. And those sensations of knowing when energy is in the process of being pulled comes from the subtle body response, which is another reason, just the long list of reasons why everybody should be exercising. Right When we first start an exercise routine, we're, we understand our gross body, which is, oh, my hamstrings hurt, my biceps are sore, I'm, I'm getting out of breath. That's a gross body response. But over time, you start to understand your body in a more complex way. You start to feel subtle body responses. You start to feel the internal pulling up of the belly. You start to feel exactly where energy is moving. It's not just a, oh my God, I can't breathe. I'm running my heart's beating really fast. Or, oh my God, this is burning my hamstrings or my quadriceps. No, you start to be able to tap past that past the burning sensation of the muscles into a subtle body response. And that information that you learn from exercising will then breed, breed into the rest of your life where you will start to feel it and you will notice it and tap into it. If you're in a situation or with a person that you feel is draining your energy, you will start to subtly feel that before it's too late so that you can remove yourself from the situation. And as you guys remember, who've been going through this book for a while with me, the Hathors also have spoken multiple times about the need for physical exercise. They flat out said in a couple of sections, if you are not exercising, you're not going to ascend. Simple as that. And there's literally no excuses for anyone. Literally no excuses. All right. So, so and that's why it's not only... The exercise is not only moving your energy, it's unsticking your values, your energetic pathways, it's pumping your blood, your sacred DNA to heal yourself, but it's also teaching you things about your physical body's responses. And your physical body, although your physical body is not your soul, it's the property, it's the nature of you, it's your, it's the shakti, it's the, it's the expression of the soul. But in that, even though the body is not your soul, it is here as your vehicle. It's like when you're driving your car and your check engine light comes on and you see your check engine light, you know something's not right. You got to go fix it. When you're able to tap into subtle body responses, when you're able to exercise and really feel and, and ground into your body, you will understand things on a clearer perspective in the spiritual world. For me personally, I will never go to a healer who's overweight. I just won't. And that's not me. I'm not judging them for being overweight because that's just an imbalance they have. And I have the tendency to go underweight. So, but what I'm looking at is somebody who's not exercising. And so for me, that says if they're not exercising, then they don't know what the fuck they're doing because they can't even ground into their own body. That's my, that's my boundary. When I look for healers, I look for people that I know that I absolutely know are working on themselves too. You can tell when someone's exercising, you can tell by just seeing their body, by seeing the, con the condition of their skin, by seeing the condition of the clarity of their eyes. You can tell that about people. The body doesn't lie. The mind lies, the ego lies, but the body doesn't. And that is why, and that is why I think the controllers have manipulated exercise so much. They've given it like a us versus them kind of dogmatic culture where, you know, people who go to the gym are like, you know, athletes and thugs and like, you know, you frat boys. And then like the book smart people don't go to the gym because, you know, that's not, or, or you're going to the gym to like punish yourself. Listen, I'm the least, when it comes to sports, I'm very coordinated. It's my Vata Pitta, but I'm not competitive. Exercise for me is a way to flush my energy. It's a way to ground myself. It's a way to heal myself. It's a way to get to know myself, right? That's what that is for me. It's part of my sadhana. Sadhana is my devotional practice. It's it's part of my time with God. Exercise is not about fitting into a pair of skinny jeans or being an athletic frat boy. No, it's about getting into yourself. 
And they talk about that a lot in this book. This is all throughout Eastern philosophy. Obviously, the Yoga Sutras speak of this. A lot of the old Vedic texts speak of this. A lot of these ancient religions force their participants to, to do some sort of physical movement. And I guarantee you, in ancient Egypt, they were not trying to look good in a bathing suit. It wasn't about impressing somebody else with their six pack. It was about knowing their body. Don't you find it peculiar that in many churches, people are drastically overweight? I've yet to meet one person who is drastically overweight who's happy. Just something to think about. All right. We suggest a simple method for protecting yourself when healing another person. You simply focus some part of your attention on your pranic tube that goes to the center of your body, as discussed earlier. That's Sushumna, the pranic tube. We talk about that a lot on my channel. If you are ever practice traditional yoga, you know Shashumna is why we engage the bandhas to lock the energy within the tube that carries Kundalini or Christ Consciousness. This tube connects you to both the celestial realms and to earth. Yes. By this, we mean you can draw from both celestial and terrestrial prana. And by connecting these two subtle energies through your body, omnipresent healing energy will more, more fully move through you and you will at the same time be more grounded, balanced, and aware. Yes, they spoke about that earlier. If you're not grounded, if you're spending all your time up here trying to like not be on earth you ain't gonna ascend you came to earth to be a human get into your body magdalene and her missing gospel which i've always point back here because it's back here she talks about that you gotta you cannot ascend it's not possible for you to ascend unless you descend first you didn't come into your body for shits and giggles you came into your body for a reason for an experience to learn this is earth school you got to participate. If you go to school, actual school, and you don't participate, you're not going to pass, are you? Common sense. You got to participate in earth school. Get into your body. Get to know yourself. Stop projecting. Pull yourself in. Figure yourself out. That's why you came to earth school. All right. As a healer, you need to cultivate an awareness of your ka, your own vitality. I just said that, didn't I? It is possible, by the way, for a person to pull another individual's energy, even if he or she is not within the proximity of the other person physically. It can be done from thousands of miles away. Yes, because energy is not bound to time or location. Have you ever just been like, you know, like doing the dishes and all of a sudden you think of somebody that you've known that lives like in another country, it's an energetic pull. Prana is not the subtlest energy, even though it is subtler than physical matter. There are energies that have an even subtler vibration than prana, and these energies have more powerful healing properties. The higher you ascend in vibration, the closer you will get to source and all that is, where you can draw from those most subtle energies. The pure you are, the more powerful your healing results will be. Also, the pure you are, the more organic portals and narcissists are going to target you. Which for me, I've been targeted a lot by organic portals and narcissists and coven members. So I know I'm over the target. So thanks, guys. What the devil will use for bad, God will use for good. That's kind of a wink to me and not to me that I must be doing something right. A healer's mastery evolves. As a healer's mastery evolves, he or she reaches a point where it is possible to dissolve an energetic block or dissolve a crystallized pattern through skillful manipulation of energy. This level of mastery is a natural development. However, there is a fine line between seeing the need for change and forcing that change. That's what I was saying with the values. Like the values are pathways in the body that you cannot see on an MRI right? They're energetic pathways. And that's what gets stuck. And even an exercise will also clear, you know, the physical pathways, but it also more importantly, changes the energetic patterns and path pathways. We talk about that a lot in Ashtanga. 
there are patterns that you have developed in your life. And some of those patterns cannot be broken unless you consciously come in and do the alchemy of the practice to change those patterns. The healer must ascertain whether the type time is right for the change or not. In the final analysis, the choice for this change must come from the one being healed and not from the healer. Healers who impose their will onto others will find that such manipulations are ultimately ineffective no matter how skillfully applied. Yes, because you can, you can only bring a horse to water. You can't make the horse drink. You got to let that horse decide what it, if it wants to drink or not. Healers must also understand that they often attract to themselves clients who reflect their own psycho-spiritual issues. Ding, 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 ding. The man in the mirror right there. So in the process of healing and being a conduit for higher energies, the healer is also a learner. If the healer remains humble and open to their clients as reflections of their own process, they can grow even more in self-awareness and compassion. Finally, healers need to be clear that others have a right to suffer. Do not impose your timetables onto another. Grant the space and the grace for others to move into greater awareness at their own speed. That is one of the most profound statements. I'm going to read that again. Finally, healers need to be clear that others have a right to suffer. Suffering is necessary. It's real. That's the friction. I see this a lot, and I know I'm not a parent. I'm an aunt. I have a nephew and two nieces, and God knows I will do anything to try to help their life. I would love to take their pain on for them, but trying to take your child's pain on for them is not helping them. They have a right to suffer. That's what's going to give them wisdom. So if you try to take that suffering away from somebody else, you are taking away their experience to ascend, to gain wisdom. We don't want to intentionally inflict pain and suffering onto somebody else. But our own personal suffering usually comes from our own thoughts and our own mind, the Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. You know, somebody could have their boyfriend cheat on them and not take it as personally as somebody else. It's about that person's perception. So we have to allow people the right to go into their own hell, to descend into that, because pain is real. Pain is real. Do not take away somebody else's right to suffer. That is one of the most powerful lines spoken in this whole book. You have to let them be on their journey. You trying to take away their right to suffer is putting you on a selfish path, which is service to self. If they ask you for help, if they come to you humbly and want help, give them help. But understand that they have to go through the process themselves. That's their prerogative. That's why they came here to earth. Don't take that away from them. Do not try to interrupt somebody else's karma. That's their work, their karma. Okay? All right. Regarding the use of psychology for healing. Psychology, for the most part, aims at getting humans to adjust to their society in a way that creates a little difficulty for individuals as possible. So the basic vision or goal is simply one of adaptation. But th this adaptation to a society that is essentially oppressive in regard to human potential. The human being has far greater potential for expression as well as emotional and mental experience that is conceived by most psychologists except for I had a really great, my trauma therapist was amazing because she used a lot of the yogic principles with me. So we can't, I've said this before, and Catherine says, so Edward says this on her channel, you can't tar everyone with the same feather, right? You can't generalize. Many psychologies deal with the areas of consciousness that are language-based, which requires much talking and very little time is focused on resolving fundamental energy issues unless you go to a trauma therapist. They use a lot of, you go through talk therapy at first, but then they do like EMDR, all sorts of, of practices that help shift the energy through the physical body into the subtle body. He might have written this book, though, before EMDR was a thing. 
I don't know. Everything is held emotionally in the body and the subtle fields is disordered, such as pain or trauma, has an energetic component. Therefore, you can talk and talk, but nothing will fundamentally change because the energies of the situation have not been addressed. So why talk therapy, along with exercise, is very beneficial. If individuals working in this field wish to expand themselves and their repertoire to become more effective in healing work, they should include the energetics of emotional and mental states in their methodology so that the energies of repressed emotions and beliefs are addressed more directly with their client. Exactly, EMDR. So I'm thinking that Tom Kenyon probably channeled this book before things like EMDR were around. When the energetics of a situation are addressed, the trauma as well as the discomfort are resolved. Both the nervous system and the behavior can then come back into a state of equilibrium and balance. This brings an increase of wellness in the individual. Even worse is the use of drugs to suppress the energetics of emotion. I absolutely agree with this. There is a relationship between brain chemistry, emotions, thought forms, and beliefs. But the science of pharmacology on the earth is in its infancy. No, pharmacology, that's just sorcery. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. You don't believe me? Ask the big wigs, the 1%, why their kids aren't getting zapped or taking that they know what they're doing the methods you now use to control brain chemistry are like using a club to hit a gnat shock treatment and such applications are devastating to the individual's energy field and to the person's nervous system well no shit we don't use shock treatment anymore <laughs> i don't know what he channeled this book but I don't know many people who are still doing lobotomies. So um, furthermore, shock treatments can create rips and tears in the subtle body. Since the Ka body can be damaged by these procedures, shock treatment is a very poor treatment modality. When there is a bolus or surge of energy in the brain via shock treatment, it's as if an explosion has gone off in the brain and the nervous system comes back to a different type of equilibrium than it possessed before. Sometimes that equilibrium is better and sometimes it is worse, but shocking the brain is very poor, clumsy, and crude method to alter brain activity. In the coming decades, sound and electromagnetism will also be used in treatments of emotional and mental problems. There's an editor's note here. If you are taking psychotropic drugs or other prescription medications for psychological condition, it is not advised to stop taking your medication without speaking to a qualified mental health professional. I'm glad they said that. Um, I have suggested people have asked me how to come off of medications, and I have suggested going to an Ayurvedic doctor. Um, depression is very real. Anxiety disorders are very real. So are the drugs you're on for them. And you don't want to add even more shock to your system just by going cold turkey. You need to be with a trusted, a trusted medical professional that will honor and respect your choices and help you course correct in a very healthy way that's not going to damage you or put you into more trauma. Um, Ayurvedic doctors can do that. If you have a good therapist, they can do that for you. So yes, do not quit cold turkey. All right, you guys, I was going to go a little bit further today, but that was a really heavy topic and something's telling me to cut it there for today. Um, again, I'm going to put the episodes for the organic portals down in the description box. I really, really, really liked what they had to say. Again, remember, everybody has the right to suffer. Really just work on yourself protect your energy, work on your boundaries. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.